Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comics from the Future, our weekly show where we go over all the comics that are available to order, usually just for one week. But this is an extra big holiday show. Yeah, this should be comics from the future, future, future. <laughs> yes. So pretty much all the publishers have realized that the available order dates are going to be right on Christmas and New Year's for the next two weeks. So they are making everyone do all their orders for three weeks this week. So this is basically a triple show. And, you know, you may wonder, okay, what are you going to do next week and the week after? Don't worry. We have some special shows in mind. Last year we did sort of a year review. I think we're going to do like a year roundup review. That was uh, really well received. Yeah. And really popular. So anyhow, very, very big week. But if you want to get these comics guaranteed, you have to order them this week. Yeah. Some of these don't come out until as far off as February. Kid you not. So big week, but a really important week. So uh, I guess we better launch into it a little bit. Okay, so let's start with our featured comics, beginning with... Action Comics number 1051. So this is kicking off a brand new era for Action Comics uh, and a new format. So Action Comics now will be made up of multiple stories featuring different characters from the Superman family. Really excited about this. You can see uh, that promises new costumes, obviously on the cover, yeah, but that. also first appearances and just kind of a uh, a good jumping on point if you haven't been reading Superman and, and his friends for a while. We have stories like, uh, we have Steel, who is helping to improve and rebuild Metropolis. It says into a, almost a more like Tonian city, which I think is really interesting. We have... Story they're calling Lewis and Clark 2. I'm not sure why it's called that, but uh, it actually goes back to when uh, Jonathan Kent was a kid and he is going, it says go up against, again, go up against Doombreaker. So we haven't seen our last of Doombreaker. And also we have a story about Power Girl spinning out of Lazarus Planet. So this is still tied in with continuity and everything. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more oversized than usual. Uh, I think it's about a dollar more. I think it's maybe a $4.99 or $5.99 book now. But whole new era, new creative teams on all the stories. So sounds really fun. So they really are setting this up for a jump on point. Yes. You know, sort of whether you've been reading it or not. Like dive in because right off the bat, new characters, new costumes, yep. new creators. Okay. And so we've got some great variants. Starting off, we have the Steve Beach cover. You can see they're messing with Metallo. And I, I remember a few weeks ago we showed this because there was a um, acetate, acetate version of it. Yeah, that you had to order a few weeks back. So this is the non-acetate yes. one. Then we have the Fornes. Very interesting. We have the uh, Davila, which is really fun. She hitchhiking. hiking. Oh, you know, I guess she forgot the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have this one. This is the Sandoval cover with those new kids that they've adopted. I guess with hitchhiking, you know, you get to meet the strange characters. You're lonely in the sky. The stranger. We have the really nice Nakayama cover. And we have the Lee Weeks cover as well. It's great. It's like he's just leaping to see how far he can leap. <laughs> Okay, so a new number one from Marvel is Silver Surfer Ghost Light. This is going to be, I believe, a five-issue miniseries. This is by writer John Jennings with art by Valentino Delandro. So this is interesting because right off the bat, okay, there's Silver Surfer, but who's that in his hand? It is a brand new superhero named Ghost Light. So sometimes we don't know when first appearances are going to happen. This time we do. This character has an interesting history because Ghost Light is actually Al Harper, who was a character back in Silver Surfer number five from his original series back in 1969. So um, he was not a superhero in that, though. He was just a regular scientist. He helps out the surfer. He actually saves the world with Silver Surfer. But he gives his life to do it. Well, I don't know what's happened between 1969 and now, but he is coming back in this miniseries as a superhero in his own right with his own set of, of uh, cosmic powers. It seemed like, um, from what I've seen, they're like um, sort of gaseous based. You know, he could turn into like gas, yeah. things of that sort. 
So anyway, first appearance of Ghostlight will be in this. What else this is about, so I, you always need your focal character, and it seems like the focal character is this young girl. Her and her family have moved to a new town where she unravels some mystery. I could not find out any details on that. But the mystery ends up bringing Silver Surfer into her life, so it's got to be a pretty big mystery, yeah. and I'm sure it somehow links in with Ghostlight. So that is the premise to Silver Surfer Ghostlight, the new five-issue miniseries from Marvel. So this is our main cover. Here is the Chichetto variant. Silver Surfer is thrashing on some planets. I know, He's I doing wonder. Tony Hawk on, like, <laughs> on, on planets and such. And then here is the Clark I variant. I love this one. So, yeah, you know, many of you are looking. You're going, that's Planet of the Apes. It is. So Marvel, they got the rights to Planet of the Apes a little while back, and now they're doing a variant series. You're going to see some other Planet of the Apes variants as well. I'm a fan of Planet of the Apes for so many reasons. I mean, yeah. For one thing, Rod Serling was the creator, mm -hmm. and I'm a huge Twilight Zone fan and Rod Serling fan in general. Plus, I think the new batch of movies has been as good as the original batch yeah. of movies. So I can't wait to see what Marvel does with it. I doubt they're going to have this sort of meetup. I would love to see that, like, Herald of Galactus comes to the, the Planet of the Apes. It's such a good what if <laughs> slash <laughs> crossover, but I think the only way you'll get it is in your own imagination by buying a really cool cover yeah, like this. Yeah. Okay, next up, I didn't know anything about this until just recently. There is a new two issue spawn mini series. So that's going to be like four spawn books on the shelf. McFarlane, he is great at keeping spawn relevant. Yes. Like once that issue 300 was coming up, he was like, I made it in the Guinness book. I'm just going to yeah. supercharge. So uh, what's special about this is it is a, uh, it's written by McFarlane. And all the art is done by our cover artist here, Mike Del Mundo, who's done a lot of stuff with Marvel and, and various publishers. But he's kind of one of those like artist artists that uh, can like, you know, sell a book just on his art. Um, so this is going to be two issues: Spawn Unwanted Violence. And in this, it's hard to get like a uh, the solicit and the stuff I read. It's just, like a couple of separate things, and I'm not sure how they tie together. But it brings up that Spawn has kind of his uh, one of his right hand guys called the Freak who is the best at getting information out of people. Uh, and he is trying to get this mysterious file F. Don't know what that is going to be about. But then it says that Spawn witnesses a, uh, a act of violence so senseless that he has to do something about it. So I don't know if that is something that the freak does. Or, <laughs> or it's if, done to him. Or done to him. I don't know how it, those, those things go together. But, uh, I mean, we were saying before, Spawn's not really one to talk about uh, senseless violence, but we'll have to read it to find out what, what he considers uh, not appropriate. But there is two covers for this. And they're very, very similar. So this is the A cover, and then the B cover is the Virgin version. You're right. They're about as similar about as it gets, other than maybe like a black and white and a black and white. Okay, so next up is DC's Harley Quinn Romances. Yes, that is definitely them playing off of Harlequin romances. This cover is hilarious because Aquaman is so into it and Harley is like silly and insane. Uh, if that matchup happens in this, I, I just won't believe it. So this is DC's anthology for Valentine's Day. I know that nobody's thinking <laughs> about Valentine's Day right now. We have, you know, all kinds of holidays on the horizon. That's way out in February. But if you want this book, uh, you got to order it now. Like if you if you want to be guaranteed for it, so this is going to be one of their nine ninety nine anthology books. It has eight different stories, slew of different creators. It's going to have a story about Harley Quinn. It's going to have a story about Aquaman. I don't know if they're together though. I, I kind of don't think so. It's uh, Power Girls in a story. John Constantine, like not the first person I go to for yeah, Harley Quinn for romance, but you know it's got it's got to be interesting in that way. Is there anybody else I I did not miss? I think there, uh, there's going to be like a Poison Ivy Harley yeah, story uh, where it's like they met in high school type thing. Yes, Poison Ivy is the one I miss. Yeah. So um, if if you're familiar with DC and these anthologies, honestly, I'm pretty impressed by them. Yeah. I'm usually the person that reads, I think, 
most times they end up on my plate and I'm usually like, wow, these are good. And I'll usually give a quick summary of a few. And then people who weren't going to buy them at our store, buy them because yeah. writers and artists have a lot of fun with these. So that is what's going on with DC's Harley Quinn romances. So this is our main cover. And then we have by Amanda Connor. And then here is the Talaski variant. It's so good. And you look in the back and like the Brainiac ship is floating <laughs> back there. It's just, it's perfect. You can see this on a very hard look. Go to Goodwill and pull out a book on the shelf, and it looks like this. Okay, next up is one I'm very excited about. It is Star Wars Santa Staros number one. So uh, the the Marvel era, uh, I guess post Disney acquisition, has had a couple of kind of standout characters. Doctor Afra being probably the biggest, yep. but followed up from that is Santa Staros, who when she was originally brought in was uh, claiming to be Han Solo's wife. And I remember that just sent people scrambling, freaking out about this. How is that possible? You'll have to go back and read that story. It's a lot of fun. But she has become a pretty big character um, in the Dr. Aphra series and in the main Star Wars series for her own right. And this is going to be, from what I can tell, an ongoing. I, 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 it, sometimes it gives you like one of five or whatever. It didn't say that, so I'm not positive. But in this, uh, she's run into some bad luck, and she is going back to her uh, family's ancestral home. But her family's uh, kind of crooks, and so it's not necessarily like an ideal place to go back to. And what happens when stormtroopers crash their family dinner? Uh, sounds like it's going to be a lot of action, a lot of fun. And this Good is... Choice. Uh, yeah, food fights. Stormtroopers love food fights. Uh, this is written by Justina Ireland, who is a big writer in Star Wars right now. And the art is done by Per Perez. So definitely jump on this one, because this is another character that's one of those has only been in comics, but is primed to take off. So this is our A cover. Then we have the Pacelli variant. And there is actually more variants, but I think because so many of these books are so far out that artists just have not had time to finish them. So, but we still have to place our orders for them. Yep, we, we do. So a lot of other variants without covers that you just have to get <laughs> sight unseen if yep. you look them up. Um, I like this one. This is definitely a bounty honey hunter yeah. style cover, you know? Yeah, very, very so cool. The full body, you can see all the gear, you can see the attitude, the way they walk. And kind of the old west look that always goes with yeah, them. Yeah with, yeah, with Star Wars properties. Okay, so uh, next up is a new indie series from uh, writer Kelly Thompson. So this is called Black Cloak, and this is set in sort of a um, fantasy world. There might be some technology to it. It was hard to tell because they described it as a cross between Blade Runner and Saga. So to me, if you're going to have that fantasy and you're going to say it's like those two, you've got to have some technology. Yeah, both too. of those have, have quite a bit of technology. Yeah. So the general plot is that the beloved prince of sort of the last known city of this world gets murdered. And it's up to two, these two characters who are called Black Cloaks. I don't know what that means. You know, I'm sure we will learn more about it, but it is their job to figure out who murdered this beloved prince before it begins an all-out war. So, again, uh, they, they claim it is for people who like sort of Blade Runner saga sort of things. Yeah. So that's as much as I could find out. It is a new ongoing series at Image as well. So that's our main cover by uh, McLaren. Who I believe is the interior artist, the interior. Meredith McLaren. Yeah, is the interior artist. Here is the DePaul variant, the Ward variant. We got a Peach Momoko variant on this, stepping outside the Marvel yeah. universe a little bit. Here is the Lotte variant number one, because there's two Lotte variants. Mm -hmm. So this is the E variant by Lotte. And this is the F variant by Latte. Oh, it's very <laughs> similar to the last one. And based on that A cover and these covers, I'm getting uh, strong mermaid vibes. So I think uh, those are going to be kind of a key part in this. I'm seeing that too. Okay, next up is our next one shot coming in the Lazarus Planet story. This is Lazarus Planet Once We Were Gods, number one. Uh, this is by various creators, but it seems like kind of spearheaded by Francis Manipool, which I love seeing him back at DC. He's kind of 
went, did some other stuff, but uh, I'm a big fan back from his Flash and all of that. Uh, we also have Dan Waters, Philip Kennedy Johnson, and Josie Campbell with a bunch of different artists. And this actually follows uh, our, you can see on the cover, maybe a little bit more of our like mythological characters right. when the Lazarus reign happens and what happens to those type characters. I love how all these you get to kind of explore, well, what does it affect these and how does it change these? So in this, we're going to get stories about uh, Themyscira and when the rain falls on there, all of the armies that they've defended their island against rise up from the dead and they have to fight them all at once. Uh, then we have uh, Martian Manhunter. This is interesting. I can't, there's a lot going on here that is not explained. Martian Manhunter survive a psychic link to a doomsday nest. So my brain just goes to doomsday sitting on an egg. Um, <laughs> perch. But uh, you'll see with one of the variants that it really looks like uh, Martian Manhunter and Doomsday have some kind of fusion. And then we have one that I'm excited about from Aquaman, where the monsters from the trench that are called the trench suddenly can breathe air and start coming on land, which is horrifying. And then finally, we have one where it basically just says, like, it's next to the Shazam family, something happens to the Rock of Eternity. So I've enjoyed all these so far. I've read some of them that haven't been released yet. I've enjoyed all of them. They, they're really fun, and I think Lazarus Planet is a great event. So, uh, but it hasn't started yet. So if you want to read it and you want to read all of it, you got to sign up for it now. And this is, uh, I think there is just, uh, okay, there's a couple of covers. So this is our Marquez. We've got our Dave Johnson, where you can see those, like, zombie soldiers. Yeah, that, when you describe that, that sounds like a video game level to me. It does, you know, yeah. You beat everything, but now it all comes back. <laughs> Use all your powers combined. We have the Matina, which is our Martian Manhunter Doomsday amalgamation. We have our uh, Sarmento. And then we also have the uh, Bernard Chang Lucky Red Envelope variant. They've done this for a couple of books, mm -hmm. but these are uh, a bit more expensive. They're they're kind of fancy when Very you get them. Very fancy. So uh, this one it has listed at eleven ninety nine. All right. So next up we have from Marvel Bloodline Daughter of Blade. This is another five issue miniseries. This is about Blade the Daughter, who was first introduced in the Free Comic Book Day um, the past year. So her name is Brielle Brooks. So Brielle is trying to be a good student. She's going to school. You, you just can't go to school in the Marvel Universe no. if you're at all connected with the hero. Um, that always takes a backseat. So she's trying to be a good kid. However, she starts having vampiric tendencies. Um, and but then some of her tendencies are like her dad. where So she's starting to find she's part vampire, but at the same time has this craving to kill the undead. Um, not to mention, she's going to find out in this series that Blade is the bad. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's some of what you can look forward to in Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, the new five-issue miniseries from Marvel. So this is the main cover. We have a blank cover. We have a Ron Lim variant. He's already fighting the vampires. Yep. A Stegman variant. That's really cool. We have a Wolf variant. That's the artist. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, once you put the teeth in, the Zulu cat variant. I think this is going to be big because this character has been kind of in incubation for a long time. They announced this character years and years ago now that Blade was going to have a daughter. She was going to have a mini series. And I guess he just got put on the back burner. Yeah. So this character has been, you know, simmering there for a long time. And I'm excited that finally she gets the miniseries that we were promised years ago. Next up is another really big one. This is from Mark Miller. And this time, uh, I believe the original series was Steve McNiven. But this time is uh, Batman's own Jorge Jimenez, which I'm very excited about. I love his art. Uh, if you, this is Nemesis Reloaded. If you don't know about Nemesis, it came out back in uh, 2010, was the original, I believe, six-issue miniseries. Uh, and back then, it was, he teased it as, what if Batman was the Joker? 
So what if you had all the trappings of Batman? So you have our character Nemesis, who uh, is a rich orphan who's got all these gadgets and everything, but his personality is as bad as the Joker. So this has always been uh, that, like the original one, over the top, just, you know, uh, not for the squeamish. Uh, but I'm excited about this because it, there's some interior pages you can check out. It's a very interesting, uh, you know, swapping of the Batman thing. Like, what if you were, like, truly horrified he was in your city? Um, this, if you're familiar with, like, kick-ass and that kind of thing, that's this this Mark Miller that you're getting from here. Um, so it not a whole lot is known about the storyline in this, but it does sound like if you haven't read the original series, it's fine. It's basically going to catch you up and more adventures with this character. So there's a lot of variants. I had to omit uh, some just because of how brutal they were. But I've, I've got a few here for you. So this is our A cover. We have our Jimenez black and white cover. Totally different. Oh, still with a little red. Uh, this is our McNiven cover. Definitely Joker vibe. Yeah. yeah. We have our Fiona Staples cover. Really cool to see her doing that. And then a blank cover. All right. So new from Marvel is another five issue miniseries. They, they like doing these five issue series, which I, I don't really mind, honestly. Yeah. Not everything needs to be ongoing. And when you just do one shot, not enough from the breathe. Mm -hmm. So this is Bishop War College. So what's going to happen in this is Bishop is going to take some of the younger X-Men under his wing. They're, it's not going to be like Strange Academy where they're so young. Mm -hmm. That's why it's more of a college. It's college. <laughs> yeah, so the, so he's building a new, a new team that he is going to train. And it's going to be Armor, Surge, Sam Long, Aura Charles, and Mass. That is the team. But I'm betting they're going to get somebody new that's not announced. That's usually what yeah. happens in these things. It's kind of your like uh, your character that you can you can learn from. Yeah. And stuff. That is what I'm betting. But those are the characters that were announced. None of those are first appearances, but I bet there'll be one. Mm -hmm. So that is just generally what this is about. Here is the Mundos Planet of the Apes variant. Then we have a Rob Liefeld variant. Oh yeah, and that gun. That's classic and then we have a portaccio variant for bishop war college number one new five issue series and we're still rolling out with the number ones we have a new red goblin number one so red goblin is a character that came out during dan slot's run that was um norman osborne he he took on the mantle it was like what well, he was merged with carnage was that what made right. red goblin yep. i believe well this time norman his uh, grandson yep. is getting his own symbiote. Uh, but Normie's a pretty good kid, uh, you know, so or is he going to follow in the footsteps of, like, the traditional goblin, or is he going to find out a way to uh, use it for good? This is another one. I'm not sure how many issues this is. I'm guessing this is probably also a five-issue miniseries. But uh, if you've been reading Venom, this is kind of a spinoff of Venom with that character so there this is another one where there's multiple variant covers but only uh one other one that was available so this is our a cover and then we have our uh is this one the fornes no this is the riley window shades variant yeah and i'll be interested to see if dylan brock's in this because yeah. dylan and normie are like pretty good side um, i'm assuming dylan will probably be in this series too Okay, so the next one, Rick and Morty gets a new number one of their ongoing. Mm -hmm. I know it seems like every other week Rick and Morty has a new mini series coming yeah. out. I think currently they're fighting Cthulhu. Yeah. Um, but this is, you know, definitely a little more gravity to it because it's an ongoing. Their last ongoing series went to issue 100. And that number one is still worth a pretty <laughs> penny. So, yes, after 100 issues, they're relaunching with a new number one. The writer of at least this first one is Alex Firer with art by Andrew Dollhouse and various other people. Because usually they'll have a story, then they'll have a few little yeah. things in it as well. So this is our main cover by uh, Fred Streising. Here is the Ellerby variant. Then we have the Jarrett Williams variant with Morty's... Uh, Somewhat creepy teacher. Yeah. He's generally nice, but the episode where they incepted his dreams. <laughs> I 
great episode, but it makes you wonder if he should be a teacher. Here is the Emmett Hobbs. Yeah, Golden Folds. That's his name. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He has his own cereal. Golden Folds. Here is the Roberts variant with Rick as a server like a person like a, on far hop yeah on, on roller skates and then lastly we have this angela trizine variant for rick and morty number one and there's still more number ones this is a new uh mini series that is going to be tied in with the sins of sinister event that's going on with the x-men so this is storm and the brotherhood of mutants and I think you talked about it when you talked about Sins of Sinister, that this is this takes place in various times in the future. Yes. Um, and, and it's not necessarily the regular Marvel Universe either. Right. So this one is going to be set uh, 10 years in the future. And the era that they call um, the Sinister Age, it's almost like the Age of Apocalypse idea. But in this, Mars has been destroyed, and Storm is going to seek revenge for that uh, teaming up with the Brotherhood of Mutants, she can fight her way through hell to find uh, the greatest secret of the Sinister Age. So, don't know what that's going to be, but a new character is teased that is called Iron Fire. So, very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of Storm fans out there, so it's always nice to get a very Storm centric book. Um, this is our oh, this is by Al Ewing and the artist by Paco Medina. This is our A cover. Then we have the uh, Casa Grande. Pretty cool. She's floating around like a dark cloud. She's kind of <laughs> yeah. kind of angry, but that, that hair's hair, like, a hair like a cloud white cloud. And, yeah. yeah. And then we have our Wernick variants, showing off those Omega powers. Yes. Okay, so those were our featured number one. So Andy produces a show. I don't know how you could decide this week which ones were featured versus which ones were not. So we have more number ones to show you because this is three weeks of stuff. So if you see some of these and you're like, I want that more, well, you know, it's hard to decide. Mm -hmm. we, we have to make decisions. So beginning with DC Power, A Celebration. This is DC's anthology one shot for Black History Month, month which is February. Yeah. So this is 104 pages. Now, a lot of stories in this. It didn't say how many. I'm betting there's going to be at least eight to ten stories. Mm -hmm. It's going to be $9.99. Um, you know, they do this yearly. It just sort of highlights um, black DC characters, and it is it has uh, DC writers and artists as well. So um, that, I mean, that's basically it. It's, yeah, it's Marvel does anthology. a similar thing as well, uh, these these anthologies. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's going to be releasing, I think, uh, January 31st, so that's good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times they get them like far in the month. This time it'll be there for yeah. the entire month. I'm sure that uh, we'll be giving it a good review. So this is the main cover by Janoy Lindsay. Here's the Sozamaka cover, which is, as you can see, just a wraparound. Mm -hmm. That looks really cool. I can't wait to see that like close up in yeah. my hands. And then here is the Taj Tenfold variant. I like this because it gives you a better sense of who's going to be in this. Yeah. There's some really interesting ones. The new Black Adam. Uh, you've got Aqualad in there, I believe. Uh, yeah, you've got actually some of like the newer DC characters presented. So I think that's really cool. Yep. Okay, next up. Is I know this felt like it just started, but this is Dark Web Finale number one. So, of course, they can't tease too much about this because it literally like just started, um, I think like two weeks ago. But it basically says, see how Chasm and Goblin Queen have... It sounds like they've done something to affect New York City in kind of a permanent way the, to, the, to the landscape or something uh, since all of the... Limbo demons kind of took over buildings and, and various things in the city. Uh, and Chasm is going to use his final trick and as he unleashes all of the demons of Limbo on Spider-Man and the X-Men. So it's hard to think about since it just started, but you, especially with a book like this, need to let your store know that you want, you know, the whole thing, or at least if you're reading, you know, part of it. Uh, if you're reading the Spider-Man side or just the X-Men side, that you want to get the capstone to that story. Um, so that is our A cover for Dark Web Finale. We have the Medina variant. 
we have the Momoko variant. And then we also, it's so funny that this is listed with the finale, but this is the second printing of the first part. Uh, so this is um, the Hubert number one second printing. Yeah, this is how hard it is to order comics these days yeah. because of publishing problems. Like, you know, you have events ending right as the second print of number one is yeah. available. So it makes us have to guess, but that's why we do the show. Yeah. You know, it's all about getting information out there so that you can inform your comic store what you want in advance. It just helps the whole process, yes. which has gotten messier than ever. Okay, so next up, uh, speaking of Peach Momoko, it is a new one-shot in the Momoko universe called Demon Days Down in Flames. So, uh, again, I, as I previously said, this is just a one-shot, you know, before they were doing sort of minis on these. I believe this is going to be 40 pages, though, for $4.99. In this, the phoenix of her world is going to war against magic. So two very powerful forces in the Momoki universe going to war. And this kind of puts um, Mariko right in the middle of things. So that is what's going on in it. This is our main cover by Momoko. Here is the Girihuru variant, the Johnson variant. Momoko did another variant mm -hmm. other than the main cover. And lastly, we have a Pinosian variant. Very interesting uh, design with that big arm. Okay, so uh, I like how back when Barbaric started, they teased like, oh, this is going to be a whole universe. There's going to be other characters in spinoff series. Well, this is a new one called Barbaric Hell to Pay, uh, a new miniseries where Owen, our barbarian, and his uh, his wise crack and bloodthirsty acts uh, actually have to go through hell. You can even see on the cover it says he, that he's going to uh, wrangle a dragon. So if you've enjoyed all the barbaric stuff, this is the new one to jump on board with. So this is our A cover. Then we have our uh, Gooden B cover. And I also want to show off that they are doing new. Um, direct market exclusive covers for the trade. So if you want to catch up, this is volume one, collects issues one through three for $9.99. And then there is a volume two that collects the next mini series that was three issues plus a one shot that is $16.99. Okay, so a new indie series that is starting. This is a limited series, but funny enough, it's going to be eight issues. You usually don't get them in yeah. amounts like that. It is called Immortal Sergeant. This is from writer Joe Kelly with the art and this cover done by Ken Nomura. So the premise of this is it's a sergeant who is about to retire. Have we ever heard that before? <laughs> um, I, 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 that premise is always hilarious. He's too old for this game. Yeah, too old for this job. So the sergeant's about to retire when he gets some information on a case that he has followed pretty much his whole career. It was like the serial killer case. And so he kind of has one last shot to catch this guy. Unfortunately, he, his son is with him on his last day. I guess he didn't think anything was going to happen. He didn't see any movie about a sergeant on his last day. And the son has these uh, anxiety problems. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of young people do these days. And so the sergeant has to go with his anxiety riddled son and try to get this last case completed. So it sounds to me like it's going to be a clash of like different age groups and mm -hmm. cultures and such. So hopefully it'll be a fun read. Very so, interesting art. For sure, yeah, because that is your interior artist doing the cover there. So that's what it is. It's eight issues, and there is just the one cover. Just the one cover. Yep. Next up is a new one, Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, number one. This is by uh, Britton Lingle, and the art and the cover is done by uh, Hyundo Park. So, I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, Snow White, I like the way they say it, though. Snow White uh, wakes up with, you know, true love's kiss 28 days later. So uh, the enchanted forest that she's been in is now overrun by grim fairy tale zombies. And she has to team up with Rapunzel and Prince Charming to survive. So if you are a fan of those fun mashups with the uh, horror and fantasy and all of that, this is a good one for you, and I believe it's just the one cover as well. 
Yeah, I was gonna say the the premise and title. If I didn't know the publisher, I'd say Dynamite. Yeah. But when you said there's no variants, then we know it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not Dynamite. Okay, so uh, this is called How I Became a Shoplifter. This is going to be a three-issue comic series, and uh, it's from publisher Sumerian. Um, this was written by uh, Tom Brayfogle with various artists. So I'll tell you what this is. It's supposed to be sort of an anthology of different stories of kids being bad before the days of the Internet. Hmm. It is set in... Um, between the uh, times of 1996 and 2003. Okay. So I know this era very well, and I had a lot of friends who were bad. In fact, we have a lot of my stores set up in certain ways because some of my friends were shoplifters, and I knew what they would do, and so good to know the tricks when you have your own store. Yes. Um, so kind of an interesting premise, uh, but on the other hand, I don't like how it probably, in a way, promotes in a good light shoplifting. Maybe all the kids have to come up and send the end. Maybe. Don't do it to your local store. Yeah. Please, please. We need to keep local stores alive. <laughs> Anyhow, that is the premise to this. It's a three-issue series. And so this is the main cover by Juan Cavia. And then here is our variant from Gabrielle Falzoni. I, I have to say, yes, I have fun stories that could have gone in this too. Uh, not, not, none, none me personally. Right. So. Uh, next up is a new book uh, from Source Point by Cullen Bunn. So I think Cullen Bunn is in his quest to have a book published to every publisher and multiples of that. So this is Nightwalkers, number one, uh, a five part miniseries. And it's, it's kind of hard to tell the full story of this. The, uh, even the solicit kind of sounds like you jumped in the middle of a thing. But it says a group of survivors leave behind a uh, kind of a grisly scene from a rehab center. Now, it doesn't say, are they the cause of that? I guess with survivors, they, they made it out. It doesn't say what happened there or anything uh, when they go, head into the woods. And, but it says that's when the real horror starts, when they come upon an eerie, small town. So, sounds really interesting. Uh, don't know much about it, but with a name behind it with Cullen Bunn, I have I have high hopes for it. So love Cullen Bunn doing horror, and that's what you'll get. And there's two covers, and once again, this is a case of uh, variant covers that are very similar to the A covers. Because there you go. Okay, so a lot a lot of horror comics still yeah. going on, including Zombicide Day One. So um, this is a four issue miniseries that is of course inspired by the hit board game Zombicide by Simon which they even have their logo in the bottom. That's why I gave this to you, because I was like, I think that's a board game, and I think you would know about I, it. I do know. <laughs> I, yes, I know much about board games. So uh, Sourcepoint Press is publishing this with, I guess, Simon's help in a, in a way. And this is just going to be a four-issue miniseries chronicling the first days of the zombie outbreak that leads to the Zombicide game. So uh, this is our main cover by Luca... Belgaroni, and then we have a B cover by Giancarlo Oliveras. So, yep, definitely a big board game. If, if you, if, I, I wonder how much crossover. I mean, people, I think, assume there's like tons of crossover between like nerdy things. Yeah, you know? like if you like board games, you love comics. It depends. It depends. Honestly. Everyone has a budget, and it's hard to correct <laughs> go across the board. Yeah. But. So, all right, and finally, I mean. Need I say more? They're continuing with the uh, TMNT best of. This time we are getting Krang. Uh, probably one of the best covers so far with Krang. Collecting. Uh, usually it has like their first appearance and then key issues of that character throughout the multiple publishers of TMNT. Uh, Krang is one of my favorite characters. Uh, you know, his voice from the animated series is always stuck in my head. So if you've been getting all of these, and this one's your collection. Okay, so now that we're through with all those number ones, we're on to our next segment. Cool covers and other comics. This is variants that we think are noteworthy. This is also going to be issue number twos and threes of series that have begun that maybe you've read and you like and you just need a little uh, reminder to sign up for them. Starting with 
This actually is just a, a cool Mike Allred variant for Batman the Audio Adventures number five. It looks like Batman is trapped in a Salvador Dali <laughs> world on this cover. Of course he would, though. He would figure out a way to get out of there utilizing the clocks to do some kind of crazy thing. For sure. And I, I don't know if this is going to be in the issue anywhere, though, I'd say. I think this is just a really cool cover. Just a cool cover. So in this, you know, we're we're at issue five of seven, so we're far into the audio adventure story. Batman is in pursuit of the demon's brood still. Next up we have Harley Quinn number 26. Uh, and I include the A cover in here because the John Boy Myers is just, he's killing on the A cover. Incredible. And, and it looks like she has her own evil hyenas. Yes. So uh, we are getting into Harley is teaming up with the multiverses version of Harley. So it said like roughly like 49 other Harleys. And uh, she, it sounds like the uh, Harley who laughs is the big villain behind this whole thing. Uh, possibly going around and killing other Harleys and other yep. universes. So she's going to have to team up for this. Uh, some great, great covers. This is our A cover, of course, the John Boy Myers cover. Then we have the Alex Garner variant. I like the, the colors of her hair. Yeah. You really do it there. And a really fun uh, Jenny Frizen variant. I feel like this one will sell out. Okay, so next up here is the Inhook Lee variant for Detective Comics issue number 1068. They're still going with that gothic feel. Love so in this, this is going to be a special um, Two-Face issue, and they say that it is going to be split in half. I tried to look into how that was going to work, um, but I'm not sure. But I think this is going to be special. I think this might be like a you can read it front to back, back to front, or maybe the one page on the one side. Um, has a dark reflection on the other side. I was about to wonder if like half of it's good and half of it's bad. Yeah, so this, of course, is from our team of Ram V with Raphael Albuquerque. So this is the Anhook Lee variant, and here is the Ivan Reese variant. I think those Jackie actually Comics. got switched, so I think that's the... The, the Lee, okay. Yeah, from looking at it now. Yeah, that definitely looks more like Anhook Lee. So sorry, this is the Anhook <laughs> Lee. Here is the Ivan Reese Super gothics, you know, Batman standing on top of a huge organ. <laughs> okay, next up we have Punchline, the Gotham Game, at number four. Just some great covers for this. So, starting up, we have the David Marquez variant. And then this incredible uh, Warren Lau variant. Almost looks like a cosplay cover with how realistic that looks. Okay, so this is the Ekman Lawn variant for Sandman Universe Dead Boy Detectives number two. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen Ekman Lawn's name mm -hmm. around too much until lately. I think we talked about that name yeah. last week. Um, but it seems like they're they put out some good variants because this is creepy and strange. Yeah. So in this issue, the uh, Dead Boy Detectives have learned that their new friend has some very dangerous enemies that they need to face. And then we have Amazing Spider-Man number 19. And reading about this, I am really excited. This is going to be a two-part um, story where it takes place after Dark Web. And to kind of recover from all of that, Peter and Felicia are going to go on a vacation. So it sounds like they are pushing their relationship even further. Uh, and they are going to go on, I believe it, I can't remember if it's like a beach or I think it's a mountain, like maybe like a ski resort type thing. Um, but of course, it's not going to go well uh, and it's going to get disrupted. But this, uh, these two issues are going to be written by Joe Kelly and Terry Dodson is doing the interior. So this is going to be really, really nice. And there's some great variants for this one. So this is our A cover. Then we have the uh, Mobley. That's the Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes one, which is he, he swinging kind of on the Statue of Liberty. And and then uh, we haven't done one of these off yet. Nope. So they are doing uh, the Marvel No Prize variants, which I think is looks like this. It's just a cover with a picture of an envelope on it. And briefly, a No Prize was back during like the Stan Lee days. If you've caught a continuity error or something wrong in the book and you wrote them, 
to thank you, they would give you a no prize. Basically, they'd give you nothing but an envelope that said, like, congratulations, you won a no prize. Uh, people have fond memories of those back from the day. So a few of these variants this week have one of these. Okay, so here... Oh, oh no, wait. there was that there one was more. The There's the one more. Yes. I even made a note about it. This is the Disney uh, 100 uh, Persinato variant, which I jump on these because these are going to go fast. Absolutely, because they did the Avengers one yeah. with Mickey and Friends, and now this one with the Fantastic Four, but as Minnie and... And friends. this is for Amazing Spider-Man, but it even says Fantastic Four big on it. So don't don't be confused. I'm glad we got this one. The yeah. cover in time was ready. Okay, so next up, this is the main cover to Miles Morales Spider-Man number three. So his new series just started. And in this, he is going to finally be full on attack by the new villain, Rabble, who is right behind him on this. We meet Rabble, but not in her like full villain gear in that first issue. And we know she hates Miles, but we don't know why. This issue, they claim that we might find out a little bit of her past and why she might hate him so much. So this is the main cover to Miles number three. Here is the graffiti variant. Very nice and colorful, like uh, the rainbows are his webs. Here is the Stegman Planet of the Apes variant. He's he's going toe to toe with them. And this he one. is angry. And then the number one is going to second print. Here is the Mark Bagley variant for well not variant but Mark Bagley's cover for Miles Morales number one second print. I thought it was interesting on the graffiti one too that it has him kissing Gwen Stacy in the background. So I wonder if they're going to be picking back up on that. That That's right. Plot I for, thread. I, for, I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, next up is Avengers number 65. And the big deal about this one is this is when we're finally going to get the story of uh, Avenger Prime. Uh, basically, he's been alone forever, and now he's surrounded by the Avengers from all the multiverses. And uh, he's finally going to tell his story. So this is our, I believe this is the Johnson... Uh, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. And then we also have the uh, Saga, the uh, Lionel Francis U Saga Phase 3. The last one was a Laraz Planet of the Apes, and this is the Lionel Francis U Infinity Saga Phase 3 variant. Okay, so this is the... Um... This is the main cover to Avengers yeah. War Across Time number two. This is the new mini series that takes place in the past with this classic Avengers team by uh, writer Paul Levitz with art by Alan Davis. So this is the main cover, and this is the McCone variant for issue number two of Avengers War Across Time. And once again, we have Black Panther number 14. We have a no prize variant for this one. Then we have the. Uh, Romero variant with Shuri on it. And then I love this, and this almost reminds me of a Dodderman variant, but like, what if you were on like the receiving end of all those characters? <laughs> but this is the Planet of the Apes variant. And okay. then we also have uh, Wakanda number five of five. Uh, really cool with Captain America on there, too. This is the White variant. Yeah, it's a series that follows a different Wakanda mm -hmm. in each issue. Okay, so check this out. Marvel's doing another variant series. This is the Anatomy variant series, where they're going to highlight characters in action, and you're going to get to see their organs. For which one did we get? We had one last week. It was it Hulk? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. There's characters I really want to see, like... Like, show me Ghost Rider. Is it just, like, bones and flames, or...? No, there's souls in there. <laughs> So uh, this is the anatomy variant to Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number nine. And in this issue, the Cap's new invaders team is going to try to find and take on the outer circle. And then here is the Planet of the Apes variant for that same issue. That one's great. Yeah. Next up, we have a X-Force Planet of the Apes cover. This is X-Force number 37. And this is actually done by Alan Davis. So really cool to see an Alan Davis Psylocke. And this next variant is one of the coolest variants I've seen in a long time. This is the J. Scott Campbell variant for Ghost Rider number 11. So those classic colors, just really, really cool. Um, 
in this. I, I think this is the main one. There's also like a retro one that's an incentive, but very nice. Here is the Bocello variant to Gold Goblin number four. And in this one, the, the Gold Goblin, who is trying to be good, is going to try to take on Jack O'Lantern. But unbeknownst to the Gold Goblin, there's another enemy who's gunning for him. And then next up, we have Moon Knight. This is Moon Knight number 20. Uh, but I thought this is interesting. So this is our Alan Black uh, history variant with Blade on it. But I think this is what the only one that was ready. All the other ones didn't have covers available. So uh, starting off with this really nice Blade. And then we have a, a Sandoval, Planet of the Apes variant. And a tan variant as well. So there were other uh, Black History Month Marvel variants. There were other books, but none of them no were covers. Yeah. So if you want those, you're going to have to order them to sort of sight unseen. Just like when we place our <laughs> orders, we're just going to have to go, I wonder how many people are going to want of this artist. And we can't even see yeah. the art. And we're going to do our best. But obviously, since retailers order very conservatively, you know, if you're smart mm -hmm. on things like that. Otherwise, you run out of money. Yes. Okay, so uh, next up, here is the Planet of the Apes variant for Scarlet Witch number two. Um, in this, this sounds really interesting to me because Viv Vision comes to Scarlet Witch. They're, those two I've not seen together in some time. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, they were family back in the old Tom King Vision series, mm -hmm. that which was Viv's first appearance. Well, Viv comes to Wanda for help because something's plaguing her dreams. And Wanda finds out it is the Dream Queen. And so she has to help Viv with that. Um, and then here is the Sousa. Oh, there, here's another one. Okay, yeah. so there is another. This is the Black History Month Storm variant mm -hmm. for this one. The Sousa Black History Month variant. And then here is the Via Stormbreakers variant for Scarlet Witch number two. Here's the funny thing, too. The Stormbreakers variants are also a themed variant of uh, oh. Big and Small. So you have a tiny Scarlet Witch here. You'll see one later uh, for Venom. That's a tiny Venom. So, so many series going on just in the variants of Marvel books. Next up, we have some Star Wars books, starting out with Darth Vader, number 31. This is our A cover for that. Then we have the uh, Lionel Francis Yu variant. I think Vader's going to win right there, but yeah, I mean, that's yeah. such a safe bet. <laughs> then we have uh, Star Wars High Republic number five. We have a Todd Knott variant with a new character we just met in that series. We have Star Wars Hidden Empire number three of five. A lot of these also did not have all their variants yet. And then this one is really interesting. So this is the Star Wars Hidden Empire 3 video game character variant. Uh, so this will be our first appearance on a cover of this character. I don't even know if we know the names of the characters from this game. It's called Star Wars Hunters. I think it's going to be kind of a battle royale and a Fortnite Star Wars game. Um, but we know this is one of the characters in that. So technically this will be the first appearance on a cover of one of those characters from that game. Here is the Baron's Planet of the Apes variant for Venom number 16. It's Venom fighting some apes. Oh, yeah. And then here is the Coppolo Stormbreakers variant. Where he is same he's wrestling pizza, pizza rat. He's wrestling pizza rat. So in this issue, Eddie Brock is going to give his all to try to get back to Dylan. That's a lot of what he's been mm -hmm. sort of doing. Then we have X-Men number 19. This is the Terry Dodson variant, an homage cover. And uh, this also kicks off the new um, story arc, Lord of the Brood. This is part one. And I believe this is a crossover with Captain Marvel um, as well. So in this, uh, there's a rogue groups of brood popping up all over the galaxy. And it's going to be up to the X-Men to try to stop them. It's probably why Captain Marvel's involved as well, going into space. Okay, so Eternus is finally getting its second issue. It's been a long time. That number one came out several months back, and uh, a lot of people were really happy with it. But I don't know what happened. It got really delayed. So Eternus number two of seven is finally available to order. 
this is from sort of a Hollywood team that makes movies. So I think some people are really hoping it gets made into something. So we just didn't want you to miss out on ordering the number two finally. And then we have our number two of Hexware. I was just looking. We think almost sold out of this book if we didn't completely sell out by this point. But this is the book from Tim Seeley about the uh, service android who uh, doesn't sell her soul. She buys a soul from the devil. Um, and for that, she must uh, send souls to hell that deserve to be there of monsters. So in this one, she's going to go to the low cities fighting vampires, werewolves, and demons. So this is our A cover. Then we have our B cover. The This is the Tim Seeley variant. And then we have our Sweeney Boo variant. Here is the Wingeguard variant to All Against All, issue number two. This is an indie series that just started. It's set in a post-apocalyptic Earth where uh, Earth is being mined for its genetic riches. All of humanity is dead except for one person, and he's decided he's going to do everything he can to uh, get revenge on the aliens. So um, this is the Windguard variant, and then here is the Danny variant for issue number two of All Against All. Another one we sold through a ton of. And also one that we, I know for sure, sold out of. Uh, this is I Hate Fairyland number three. And see that little thing sitting there? That is a Gertlin. That's like a gremlin, but with Gert. Uh, I fused in somewhere. Fused I see the somewhere. hair. Yeah, so uh, the it just crack. says, meet the Gertlins. Uh, seems really fun. So this is our A cover by Scotty Young. Then we have our uh, a little bit more explicit, a little bit more violent uh, B cover by Scotty Young. We have the bean cover with all those girt lines. Wow, and then we have a peach momoko variant. Okay, so uh, this is the main cover for art number two. So this was interesting because this was originally released as the Electric Sublime, like years ago, back before um, the creative team, the Ice Cream Man creative team of W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo got way more famous. And they wanted to re-release it with its the title they originally intended, Art Brood. They've uh, enhanced the art, enhanced the coloring. So this is number two of four. Um, this is the main cover. Then we have the Min Lawn variant. Mm -hmm. And we have another one by uh, interior artist Martin Morazzo with uh, help from uh, Lopez. Then we've got still more Spawn variants. We're not through the Spawn variants yet. This is the Spawn variant for Dead Lucky number five. We also have the Spawn variant for Old Dog number three. And then the two that Andy assigned to me. Here <laughs> is Time Before Time number 19. I love Spawn this when his face is real little and he's got a big old neck. I, I see that, yeah. And uh, then there is... Here's just the main cover for Gunslinger Spawn number 16. It's a very cool cover. It has like a David Mack feel to it. I think it is David yeah, Mack. Yeah, I see his signature yep. at the bottom. Yep, David Mack. It's awesome. That's really cool. Like, that's going to be one that, you know, a lot of people who aren't reading it but are David Mack fans will be picking up. Yeah, you can tell on these weeks where we have such a large show. So I breeze through, make sure everything's right. And I look at this stuff, but it's like smaller. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I don't get to really focus in. And then I really see it. So you're getting some real reactions <laughs> here. Okay, the next up is Nightclub number two. Uh, it's another Mark Miller book. Uh, it's got a couple coming out. Um, so this uh I think we did sell out this one because every issue of this five-part miniseries is only $1.99. And in this one, our main character, Danny, who uh bit by a vampire, actually thought it was pretty cool, and kind of considers himself a superhero. He's doing the thing you probably shouldn't do, but he is going to bite his friends so they can form their own, like, Justice League. Uh, which I'm that's sure is the club part of the night. It's the club, but I just imagine like you really got to consider which friends you're going to do that to because you're like, ah, I've seen you on some days and you're I don't trust you with it. But I feel like that's maybe where some of the uh, the uh, conflict is going to come into oh, it boy. when you start spreading that around. So this is our A cover for that, and then our variant, both just a dollar ninety nine. 
Here is the Francis Manipole variant for Walking Dead Deluxe number 55. Of course, this is uh, the entire re-release of every Walking Dead comic, one at a time, but it gives them a chance to do some really cool new covers, so this is one of them. And uh, this one, too, these, I think, were just announced or just shown off. Uh, Francis Manipole, I think, is doing three that are going to be connecting. Connecting. So, love seeing Manipole and the, like, really creepy uh, Lori on there that's a zombie, but she's, like, leaned up against Rick. Mm. Uh, very cool. And then we have uh, number two of our new series, Dawn Attack, from uh, inspired by the work of Frank Frazetta. Uh, I know a lot of people were really excited about this one. So this is our issue number two, our A cover. And then we have the Frazetta B cover. Here is the Zulu variant to Quested number two. So you thought Zulu just did cats? No. <laughs> no. That's right. Zulu can do many, many other things. So uh, this book, it's funny because the way they describe it in this is it's a tale that would make Tolkien cringe. So I wonder how effective that marketing is. You know, who's like, ooh, great. Great. I've been waiting for something like this. Right. Uh, so this is the Zulu variant quest of number two. And this is the Polero Akira homage variant. Yeah. The sword, the motorcycle. And it's definitely also a, uh, a kind of a Dragon Ball reference as well, that art style. Yeah. And so now we're going to get to the last segment of our show, Other Training <laughs> and Graphic Novels. We're in the final stretch, starting with Avengers number 8 facsimile edition. we been waiting for this one. Uh, first appearance of Kang. I know... These facsimile editions, we sell out of all of them. People love them. And they're just great ones to, you know, add to your collection. Um, so, yep, this is First Appearance of Kang, Avengers number 8. This cover is awesome, too, because you can see Thor's hammer is going the wrong way, which you can see it bounced right off. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. That's the story. Much. Yeah. Okay, so Extreme X-Men number 1 is going back to second print, and here it is. So that's right, that 2000s team is back. This time they have added Kitty Pride to their ranks. Mm -hmm. And they get new outfits, too, from yeah. what I remember of, of your review. I haven't gotten to it yet. So this is the second print for Extreme X-Men number one, five-issue series. This is a LaRocca variant. Another one we sold out of. And one I, I'm excited about. This is the Black Cat by Jed McKay Onibus. Uh, for only, wait, I know for only $100, but $100 for an Onibus is pretty good price. It's right there in the middle. Um, and, you know, as you were reading this, you were raving about it. I've read really some cool. of it, and I've loved every little bit of it I've read. Uh, and this is going to be 792 pages. So it's going to be his whole run, which I think is over now, right? It ended, and then it went into um, Iron Cat. You, now you mention I read so many comics. Yeah, that it's I, been a while. Right, I haven't read a Black Cat lately. I've been reading lots of other Jed McKay things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you are right. So uh, this collects all of that. It includes the uh, the King of Black story, the one where she's collecting the Infinity Stones. Yeah, that one's great. And Sandy Heist. Yeah, and it collects uh, the Iron Cat series. So you want all of Jed McKay's and Black Cat that's in this. Uh, this is our A cover. And then we have our uh, special one for comic shops. This one is by Inia Klee. And what I'll say is, if you think that Mary Jane is where it's at and Black Cat should take a, a back seat, <laughs> read this series. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so lastly, this is Batman Volume 1 of the new series uh, by a uh, new team, Chip Zdarsky with Jorge Jimenez. So this is the failsafe arc that that's just that just ended so this is going to be uh batman issues 125 through 130 in hardcover it is 24.99 this was a great read failsafe was a great villain um i mean it's like zadarsky's like i really want to give batman another villain that's as good as him mm -hmm. so who is it well uh i mean it's basically a robot that he built yeah. to defeat himself. So it, it's so it's great. It's awesome. Not only does he beat down Batman, he beats down the Batman family. He beats down Superman. I mean, you wonder how this thing's going to um, ever lose. And I thought the ending was good because it wasn't uh, wasn't so cut and dry. Yeah. So anyway, twenty four ninety nine. if you're somebody who waits to buy your Batman stuff altogether, I think this is one worthy of reading for sure. Oh, big breath. That's it. <laughs> that is uh, basically three weeks worth of stuff. 
So we will be back next week with Comics from the Future. In between then and now, we'll be back on Monday for our review show where we review the new comics as they come out. So that'll be normal. But um, in between, we'll figure out other things to do, other things to discuss. So thanks for watching. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Join the ranks where you will be alerted to all the videos we put out. So thanks a lot and have a great holiday.